Hello, fourth grade, and welcome back to module four. We're going to be working on lesson two, how waves transmit information. Let's go ahead and watch our short video and jump into our lesson. Hello, I'm Malik, and I'm waiting for the laser light show to start. Do you know that lasers can be used for things other than light shows? Some lasers can cut through metal, others are used to correct someone's eyesight. Lasers can even transmit information across the world in a matter of seconds. Someday, I want to be a photonics engineer. They help develop and design technologies that use lasers. Wow, look at all those colors. All right, let's go ahead and jump into our lesson. Now your first set of pages, you're going to begin on page 186. We're going to read the section titled Moving Information. You'll read the small conversation between the friends here and decide who you think has the best idea and then explain your thinking. Please make sure that you are using complete sentences when you go to answer this section and use your best handwriting. Remember to start your sentences with a capital letter and end with the correct kind of punctuation. Next, once you've completed that, we're going to go ahead and watch a short video of the computer code, and you're going to write down at least three questions that you have. Let's go ahead and pull up our video. Okay, now that you've watched the short video, you're going to write down at least three questions that you have about the computer code. Then you're going to read the STEM career connection about the computer programmer and answer the questions on the following page. What does a computer programmer do? Please use complete sentences and pull from the question when you write your answer. You'll start your sentence by saying a computer programmer does or is or works on, and then you'll complete your sentence. And then number two, Looking at the computer code, what clues can you find that tell what it might be for? And then you're going to answer your essential question. How do we use patterns and waves to transmit information? So use your best guess over here. We're going to learn more about this as we move through our lesson. Once you've completed that section, we're going to jump in and you have an inquiry activity called using waves to transmit information. Your materials are going to be some kind of bell or noise maker a material for, to use as a blindfold, and a piece of measuring tape. Now, for your prediction, you're going to be thinking about how can sound be used to transmit information about location. For your prediction, you're going to answer the question, can you locate the source of a sound without using your sense of sight? Explain. So can you figure out where a sound is coming from if your eyes are covered and you can't see? Next, we're going to carry out our investigation. Now we need to be very careful. The blindfold or the material using to cover your eyes should be snug, but not too tight or uncomfortable. And don't try to move around um, once the blindfold is in place. We're going to follow the steps uh, one through five on this page, and then we're going to answer our questions, which says communicate information. How could you tell where the noise-making classmate was? was? You're going to complete your five trials and put in your data that you collected over here. Then you're going to go through and answer your remaining questions. How did you guess the distance the bell was away from you? Number three, how was your prediction supported by what you discovered in the activity? And then once you've completed that section, we're going to go in and take a look at our vocabulary for this lesson and watch a video. Now, our vocabulary words for this lesson are the words echo, echolocation, binary code, and coding. Let's go ahead and look up the meaning of those different words. An echo is a repetition of a specific sound produced by reflection of sound waves from a surface. So think if you're standing in a big empty room and you shout something out and you can hear it kind of bouncing back to you, where you're hearing the sound kind of repeated back to you because those sound waves are bouncing off the walls 
So those vibrations are being reflected off of the walls and back onto your ears, into your eardrums, where you're hearing that sound again. Echolocation is the process of finding an object by using that reflected sound. Binary code is a system of representing a letter, digit, or other character using just zeros and ones. So this is what computer code looks like. It's, it's a bunch of zeros and ones in particular patterns that represent different things. And coding is the process of writing a computer program in the language that can be used by a computer. So coding, you use binary code or, or if there's another computer language that that particular system uses to get your computer to do a certain thing. All right, next we need to watch our video about information transfer. And we're going to answer question number one, how would you explain information transfer in your own words? So after you watch the video, how would you explain it using your own words? Let's look at some of the different ways we send and receive information. For instance, how do you let someone know when you need help? What if you wanted to ask your friend to come over after school tomorrow? How do you find out what's going on in the world? How do people send and receive information to pilots? Do you know how people shared information over long distances many years ago? Animals share information with each other too. What do you think this monkey is saying? What about these dolphins? Do you think this wolf is asking other wolves to come play? People and animals have a wide variety of ways to share information with each other. All right, now you can go ahead and answer your question about explaining how information, explaining what information transfer is in your own words. Once you've completed that, we're going to go ahead and read page 331 in our science handbook and answer these questions. What causes an echo? Explain how echolocation and sonar are similar. And then we've got an interactive activity that we're going to complete. So let's go ahead and read page 331. Okay, so 331, absorption of sound. When a sound wave hits a wall, some of the energy of the wave is absorbed. Absorption is the transfer of energy when a wave disappears into a surface. The energy itself does not disappear. Absorbed sound energy transforms into thermal energy, heating the surface that absorbs it. Reflection of sound. When sound waves hit a flat, firm surface, much of their energy bounces back. An echo is a specific reflected sound. You can hear an echo if you make a loud noise in an empty room. Echolocation. Echoes can be useful. Bats make sounds that echo off their prey. The returning echoes tells the bat where the prey is located. This skill is known as echolocation. Whales and dolphins use echolocation to learn about their surroundings and find food. Sonar. Scientists have developed a system called sonar that works the way echolocation does for animals. Sonar stands for sound navigation and ranging. It's used underwater to find objects. The sonar system sends out sound waves that reflect off objects. The return time and direction of the sonar echoes are used to calculate the location of the object. Bats use echolocation, use echoes to locate insects. Sonar technician. Interested in finding out about what's beneath the deep ocean waters? Sonar technicians use sonar equipment to locate all sorts of objects in the water. Sonar aboard ships can, use, can be used to find marine life, other vehicles, or even sunken treasure. Learning more about becoming a sonar technician is in the career section. Boats use sonar to find objects underwater. So go ahead and answer what causes an echo and explain how echolocation and sonar are similar. So explain what they are and how they are the same. Once you've completed that, we're going to take a look at our digital interactive called Echolocation in Animals on how different animals use sound to find food and to navigate. Then we're going to answer question number four. Explain how echolocation works using numbered steps. So 
list them in order, number one, number two, number three, break down the steps of how echolocation works. Echolocation in animals. One, echoes can be useful. Two, the speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second, m over s. Three, bats make sounds that echo off of their prey. Four, the sound waves bounce off the prey. Some of these waves return to the bat. Five, the bat hears the returning echoes and can tell where the prey is located. Six. Finding prey or other objects in this manner is called echolocation. Seven. Dolphins hunt and navigate using echolocation, very similar to bats. Eight. Sounds are produced by the dolphin which move through the water very quickly. Nine. The speed of sound in water is 1,500 meters per second, m over s. 10. The sounds bounce off the prey or other objects. Some of these echoes return to the dolphin. 11. The dolphin has special tissue in the front of its head that helps the dolphin detect the echoes and tell where the prey or object is located. You can go ahead and rewind the video if you need to, and then explain how echolocation works using numbered steps. So you had two examples. One was an example of how bats use echolocation, and the other was an example for dolphins. You can pick each or either one of those to use and answer your question. Next, we're going to read our handout called, How Does Technology Help Us Transfer Information? On Ways Humans Have Developed to Communicate Information. We're going to answer questions five, six, and seven over here. Uh, number five says, how did humans transfer information before the invention of the telephone? Number six, compare and contrast how cell phones and satellites transfer information. So this means we're going to tell how they are the same and how they are different. Number seven, how are patterns used in communication technologies? So let's go ahead and read through our handout. How does technology help us transfer information? Scientists and engineers have found unique and creative ways to use the power of waves to improve how people communicate. These technologies have advanced to transfer information faster and more efficiently. Before electricity, how would you communicate with someone far away if you didn't have a phone? Long distance communication was a problem that mankind tried to find a solution to for, for a very long time. Communication relied on fairly simple methods before electricity had been discovered. Signal fires or smoke signals could be used to communicate over long distances. Those methods required a clear line of sight so that the signals could be seen and passed on. Writing a letter and sending it with a messenger was another form of early communication, but this method was very slow and sometimes unreliable. Telegraph. In the 19th century, the telegraph provided the fastest and most reliable way to communicate over long distances. Information was transmitted through a wire using an electrical signal. Skilled telegraph operators would send electrical signals in the patterns of on-off tones or clicks. This pattern system was developed by Samuel Morse and became known as the Morse code. A telegraph operator on the other end would, in, would interpret these patterns and translate them back into messages that could be read. In the late 19th century, the telegraph was improved using wireless technology called radiography, or simply radio. Radio. Radio is the transmission of, a, of certain wavelengths of electromagnetic energy. It's possible to carry sound using radio waves by changing the amplitude or frequency of the radio wave. A radio wave is received using an electrical conductor, which then changes the radio wave back to a version that humans can hear and understand. 
radio can transmit one way, such as a radio station, or two ways, such as radio transmissions between the pilot in a plane and a receiver on the ground. Telephone. The telephone was an advance, was an advance of the radio system that allowed two or more users to conduct the conversation at the time, at the same time. The telephone converts sound into electrical signals that are transferred through cables over long distances. The signal is converted on the receiving end back into a sound that's audible and understandable to humans. Cell phone. Mobile phones or cell phones are a technology that allows people to communicate wirelessly. Cell phones are basically two-way radios. Each phone consists of a radio transmitter that sends a signal and a radio receiver that picks up the signals. When a person talks on a cell phone, their phone converts their voice into an electrical signal. This signal is then transmitted by their phone using radio waves to the closest cell tower. A network or group of cell towers then pass on the radio waves from one to another until the radio wave reaches the other person's cell phone. Other cell phones then the other cell phone then changes the radio waves into electric electrical signals and then back into sound once more. This all happens very quickly. Communication satellites. Radio waves are used in cell phone communications, but they are also used with communication satellites. Communication satellites orbit Earth. Once in place, these satellites can receive signals and then transmit them over long distances on Earth. Information is sent by radio waves to the satellite using a transmission, transmitting station. This is called an uplink. The uplink could be carrying phone calls, internet information, or video information. Once the satellite receives the signal, it makes it stronger before transmitting it back to Earth. This is called the downlink. The retransmitted signal is then picked up by a receiving station. Communication satellites allow information to be sent to places where cell phones or other methods of communication do not work. Communicating with pictures. Technology can be used to communicate through pictures. Think about how a modern touchscreen device is used. Images are displayed on the screen. These images can be interacted with by simply touching the screen with a finger. The most common types of touchscreens today are known as captive, capacitive touchscreens. Sorry, capacitive touchscreens. When the, when the screen is touched, an electric field beneath the glass is disrupted. The disruption is picked up by sensors in the device. A processor used that information to identify exactly where on the screen the touch was made. The processor then carries out the specific action needed. For example, a text message can be sent by interacting with various pictures on cell phone screens. The message is then transmitted by radio waves to the recipient when the send icon is selected. Computers. Technology has greatly improved our ability to communicate voice images, voice images, videos, and other information over long distances using waves. Communication devices such as computers and cell phones send this information using patterns. When using these devices, information is changed to patterns of zeros of ones and zeros or digitized. By using these patterns called binary code, information can be sent quickly and accurately to another device. Here's an example of how a simple text message would appear in binary code. The text says, hi, Sue, we're having pizza for dinner tonight. Would you like to come? And the binary code would convert it into patterns of zeros and ones that relate to those letters and numbers. Once you've completed that, you can answer your three questions how did humans transfer information before the invention of the telephone? Compare and contrast how cell phones and, satellite trans and satellites transfer information. And then how are patterns used in communication technologies? Once you've answered those using complete sentences, we have another activity. This inquiry activity is titled Morse code. How can you send a message using light energy to a simple circuit and a simple circuit? So here you would have a battery, wires, a light bulb, and a switch. You would follow these directions to make these different patterns. You would write down what your secret message is going to be and how it would look when it's coded. And then send your message by flashing the light quickly for a dot and, um, and, a long, and long for a dash. 
count three seconds between each letter and five seconds between each word. Then you're going to switch between you and your partner, and then you're, you need to figure out your partner's code, write it down the dashes and the, and the dots, and convert it into a message, and answer your information, your communicate information section questions. What challenges did you face in sending your message? In what kinds of situations would Morse code be useful? And why don't people use Morse code to communicate today? Number 11 asks, for a message to be sent successfully, what is needed on the receiver's side? You don't need to answer your I can statement for this section. Once you've completed those, we're going to go on and you have your research, investigate and communicate activity titled, what's that say? You know that computers use a special language called binary code to be able to communicate with other devices. In this activity, you're going to research binary code. A computer programmer uses this language and some other computer languages to write programs. These programs can be useful and we depend on them to make our lives easier every day. Take a look at the binary code below. This code represents a message and it will be your quest to decode the message. Recall that you did something similar with the Morse code activity. In that activity, the letters were represented by dots or dashes, similar to binary code. To get started, you need to research to discover the binary code for the alphabet in capital letters. You will also need to research the binary code for the spaces between words, spaces used between words. Ask the question, what question will you answer with your research? You're going to carry out your investigation. Once you've researched and found the needed information, begin decoding the numbers, moving from left to right, just as you would, with a, just as you would read a book. Record the decoded message below. Shade in boxes that are spaces. So you're going to have your letters and then just shade in or color in the box that represents a space and then write whatever your decoded message is here at the bottom. And then for communicate information, number one says, why do you think it's easier to send information using binary code instead of using actual letters? Next, we're going to read about hearing echoes. How can you calculate the distance from a surface to a reflected that reflects an echo? Time how long it takes between making a sound and hearing its echo. Multiply the speed of sound, multiply by the speed of sound, then divide by two since the sound waves make a two-way trip before, it, before you hear its echo. Suppose it takes one second for you to hear your echo after you called down a well. The speed of sound is 340 meters per second. How far are you from the bottom of the well? You're going to multiply the seconds time the times the speed of sound and then divide all of that by two to figure out the distance. So if it took one second times the speed of sound, which is 340 meters per second, and then you're going to take that and divide it by two, you're going to get 170 meters. So you're 170 meters from the bottom of that well. Solve each problem in the box provided. Now let's take a look at our information here in the blue box. Write a number sentence. Read the problem carefully. What do you know? The time was one second. The speed of sound was 340 meters per second. The sound makes a two-way trip. What do you need to find out? We need to find out the distance. Decide if you, if you need to use addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. Then write a number sentence and solve it, which we did right here. Now for number two, it says you shout in a canyon. Your echo returns three seconds later. How far away is the canyon wall? So you're going to use the same formula over here, the same equation and plug in the numbers that you have to solve. Number three, we're going to do the same thing. In the ocean, sound travels at 1,500 meters per second. A ship's sonar signal returns in four seconds. How far away is the ocean floor? So over here, we're going to do four seconds times the speed of sound in water, uh, 1,500 meters per second. And we're going to use that information to solve and figure out how far the ocean floor is. After you've completed that and you've shown your work neatly, we're going to go into our last pages. Your performance task here is titled Pixel Message. Use what you've learned about information transfer. You'll work with a group to design a solution. 
to an information transfer problem. You'll design a device or method to send a message of zeros and ones to your team members on the other side of the classroom. The zeros and ones represent black and white pixels that form an image, which can be a symbol, a letter, or a number in a grid. Your team members on the other side of the room must fill a six by six grid with zeros and ones and color them in with black or white to decode your message. So define your problem. What must your device do? So tell me, what is, your, what is the thing you're making? What's it supposed to do? Then you're going to record the materials and the way that you're going to do it in number one. Using zeros and ones, record your message in the grid on the next page. page. Shade your zeros and ones so you can clearly see your message. Do not tell your team members who will be receiving the message what it is. They will fill in the grid with their message as they receive it. Starting in the upper left-hand corner, go from left to right. So you're going to be filling it in like this. So you're going to create some kind of picture or design using these boxes. And you'll send that message over to your teammates on the other side. Using your solution to send the message to your team members, record the results and any problems that you encountered. So what happened and what kind of things got in the way? Number four, adjust your technique so you can send the message more clearly. Record any adjustments that you make. So what do you change or decide to do a little bit differently when you realize something wasn't working? Number five, switch places. And then you guys are going to be basically doing the same thing. You'll be on the receiving end to try and figure out their message. How did, your, how did you use waves and patterns to send your message? How do you solve the problem that you identified? And then your essential question, think back to the video about binary code you watched at the beginning of the lesson with the zeros and the ones. Explain how we use patterns to, uh, and waves to transfer the messages in binary code. Once you've completed that, you're done with this lesson. Please review everything you learned carefully so you're ready for your quiz and your module test. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.